Hello guys, welcome to Hankins Custom Rifles, Hank's Precision Gun Parts, another episode of Hank's TV. Today is March the 22nd, it's Friday night, a little after 7 o'clock. Uh, we're in the shop here doing a few videos on some recent projects and going over a few things for you guys. And I got a muzzle loader here done that I would like to go over. Uh, we're not going to shoot it, obviously, we're inside the building, but I can go over all the build details and show you what we've got here. This is a, a super nice gun. I really like the way it turned out. I'm going to claim it for myself if it don't sell on the website fairly quick because we've got a shoot coming up in April. And any of you guys that are interested in coming to that shoot, go to hanksmessageboard.freeforms.net and get all the information you need for attending that muzzleloader shoot. It's going to be a pretty good turnout. We've got quite a few guys signed up. Uh, looks like we're going to have um, a pretty good time. So, if this gun ain't sold by then, I'm going to take it to the muzzle loader shoot and use it if I've got time. I haven't been able to shoot the matches lately because I'm just so busy trying to run everything and keep it all organized and take care of the food and score the targets. And it's pretty busy for me to try to do all of that and compete in the match. But if it happens, I want to take this gun to the match and compete with it. So I'll go over a few things with you real quick. If I remember all the details, I think I do, but we'll see because this is not rehearsed. I just turn the camera on and start talking. Uh, we don't have a script. We don't have any kind of uh, memorized lines that I need to tell you guys. I just get up here and start talking. So here we go. The stock is a McMillan stock and this is their A3 model. It's one of their newer finishes. This is one of their wood finishes. I'm not exactly sure what they call it. They used to have one called the McWoody, but this is not what it's called. It's not the McWoody. It's a new wood stock that they have though. They've got it in, I think, six different colors. This one is called Deadwood, and I absolutely love it. It's gray and black. It just, I just like it. Now at a distance, it looks like wood. You get up close to it and you can tell that it's not wood. It's molded in uh, gel coat, fiberglass. It's black and gray and got some looking like some light grays and dark grays in there. I can do a lot of stuff with paint, but I don't know how they do this gel coat and make it look like wood. And they do that backwards. Any of you guys that know how bass boats are made, they paint the mold first with the clear coat and they build it up backwards. These stocks are made the same way. So they paint their mold with this gel coat first. And they put their colors in it. And then they lay the fiberglass up on the inside. And when they break it out, it's in two pieces. They put the two halves together somehow. I don't know exactly how they do it. I know the process, but I don't know exactly how it's done. They glue them and then they fill them with the, end, with the filler that's on the inside. So pretty neat process. I'd like to go out there one day and see exactly how they put these together. I don't know if McMillan gives tours in their shop or not, but um, I've done a lot of fiberglass work and a lot of fiberglass repair in my lifetime. I've never built anything from scratch. Watched a lot of YouTube videos. You can go watch YouTube videos on how bass boats are made and they'll, they'll show you how they do it there. And these are made very similar in the same way. So this stock, like I said, McMillan, A3, the new wood colors, and I've got some more of these coming in, fellas, so if, it, if this catches your eye and you really like it, give me a call. Well, don't call me because I won't answer the phone. Email me at hankinsrifles at twc.com. Tell me you're interested in buying a muzzle loader, and I'll call you back. Give me some build, give me some build details. Um, something to start with so I know what to do when I'm when I'm calling you back I'm just not calling some random guy that just hey I want to build a muzzle loader. I need a little bit more than that so email me with some information and we'll go from there the action is the defiance outcast I've worked with them for a while to design this and get this ready to go so it uses my modules um, it's got the slot in the bolt face so it works really nice for the primer modules and uh, let's see it's got stainless steel 
20 MOA Picatinny rail on it. The action is also stainless steel. The barrel is a Brooks barrel. This is a number 17 contour, 1 in 20 twist with the interrupted flutes on it. I think it makes it look really nice. We've got one of my barrel bands, Hank's Precision Gun Parts. We make those here in the shop. That barrel band is made to fit this barrel at this location. I offer them in three different sizes, so depending on where you cut your barrel off to where this will stop. So if this had been a 28 inch barrel and it was that much longer, I would have used the next size barrel band. If it was a 24 inch barrel, I would have used the next size bigger to come down a little farther. So we've got several choices on these barrel bands. Any of you guys that are gun builders, you want to add a ramrod to your gun, check out these barrel bands. They work really nice. They've got a hidden set screw that you can't see. It's not like the screw in the sides where they're split down the middle and you got that clamp on. Those work. I don't really like them, but they will work for you. So check out these if you want to. And then we have one of my uh, self-timing tactical style muzzle brakes on the end, bored out and ready to go to accept this loading funnel. That goes right into the muzzle brake. It stops 20, 30 thousandths before it hits the crown of the barrel. So you pour your gunpowder in, you put the, gun, the bullet through the funnel, you do all the loading through the funnel, and then once you've rammed your bullet home, you pull the ramrod out and the funnel at the same time. Try not to shoot your funnel. I've had guys do that in the past, but that's why we have them anodized a bright orange and they come with an orange lanyard. So that helps you visually see the funnel in the barrel if for some reason you got distracted and left it in there. The rings are Hank's Precision Gun Parts rings. We make these also here in the shop on the CNC machine. They are the best rings on the market, in my opinion. You cannot buy a better ring if you pay $300 for it. It's not going to be a better ring than these right here. They're super strong. They're wide, probably the widest on the market that I know of. There are six screws in these that hold these down, so you get tremendous clamping force. Even at 18-inch pounds, you get more clamping force with this ring than you will any other ring on the market because it's got a wider footprint and you're grabbing more surface. That also allows you to torque these screws down a little more than 18 inch pounds and you don't have to worry about crushing the tube because you're holding on to more tube so you would have to crush more tube in order to crush the tube. You, it would take more force to crush it so if you guys want to it don't hurt to go 22, 23, 24 inch pounds with these rings. Won't hurt a thing. Um, the side screws, I put them in. I put 40 inch pounds on those. So don't have to worry about breaking the bolts. They're not going to break. But these are made here in the shop. 7075 T6 aluminum, sent out, anodized, hard coat black. They come back in. They match the scope finishes almost perfect. It's a very good uh, match for the scope finishes. This scope is the Vortex Golden Eagle, and it's got a little bit of a shine to it. So if you was to mount a Night Force scope in these rings, it would match even better. So the, the Night Force matches really, really well. Now the whole barreled action, all the metal parts, trigger guard, everything's been Cerakoted, and uh, this is graphite black. So it gives it a nice black look, goes really good in the stock color configurations and the trigger we put in a, a trigger tech diamond on this gun i used to use jewels on all my guns i was a big fan of jewel triggers but sadly jewel triggers is no more they have gone out of business um, they had problems back in covid trying to get parts trying to get help uh, and then here just last year, year and a half ago, they ran into another supplier issue with all their parts and they, I guess they just decided it was time to close up shop. They've been around forever and it's a small private company, family owned business that I know of. And I guess the old man just got tired of, tired of building triggers. So he's, he closed it down. As far as I know, there'll never be another jewel trigger out there. I miss them. They were very good triggers. 
the last thing I can tell you is there's a ramrod on this gun. Of course there is. We already saw a barrel band, but I skipped this part. Every gun that I build with a ramrod comes with a retaining kit inside of it. So there's a slot milled into the stock, and most of the time that is done most of it is done at McMillan. They offer a, a muzzle loader inlet, so I have them go ahead and do that. I have to open it up a little bit for my tube to fit, and we do a little work here in the shop and make it all fit. But there's an aluminum tube that goes from here all the way down to guide the ramrod through the stock. And then right here, there's a block with four detent balls in it. And those detent balls, what they do, is they grab on to these two rings, these two little grooves that I machine in my bullet pusher. This is a rotating bullet pusher. Um, and I make these also here in the shop. We make just about everything here in this shop. That's one thing about us that we have on 90, nine percent of the other rifle builders everybody else has to re rely on buying parts and that's the reason i make parts so i can sell them to other builders years ago when i was building rifles you'd call somebody to buy a picatinny rail for a remington 700 and it would take six eight weeks sometimes months to get it you needed a set of rings it took forever to get it and i thought hey i need to make some gun parts because I can't get them. So now I'm making them for me and I make them for you and I sell them cheaper than anybody else and I believe they're better quality parts because I have 100% control over these parts. We make them here, I try to improve everything we do. I look at what I've been using over the years and say man if this only had this on it or man if this was this long or if it had a groove here or a notch there or something we incorporate it into the new design and I try to make it better for you guys. So think about me the next time you're building rifles and buy some of my parts. It's kind of like this muzzle brake. This muzzle brake works as good as any other self-timing four-port tactical style muzzle brake on the market. But it costs half as much. This is $85. You buy this from anybody else, you're going to pay $150 plus. I've even seen some for $250. You're not going to gain that much recoil reduction over the $250 brake as you will out of my $85 brake. So try one out the next time you guys build a rifle, guys, and uh, tell me if you like it or not. So this goes in, you push it once. And it hits the first detent, you push it the second time, it hits the second detent, it's locked in, it won't come out when you fire the gun. That was a problem we had many, many years ago when we were building these guns. Nobody had a good ramrod retaining system. Yeah, it would work okay for the old muzzle loaders that didn't have any velocity and not a lot of recoil. But when we jumped up and started using higher velocity bullets and you know we had a lot more recoil you'd shoot the gun the ramrod would come out three or four inches because there was really no way of holding it in there minus a little bit of spring pressure so i put my head to work i came up with this retaining block yes it's a lot of work to install but it's well worth it and i'll tell you another thing guys there's a lot of people building these guns they sell them for more money than i do they don't sell them with a ramrod. They don't have a retaining block. They don't have the tube. They don't have the barrel band. No ramrod at all. They tell you, well, just carry a three-piece ramrod on your, you know, in your pocket or whatever. The gun's not as accurate when you put the ramrod on. That's another excuse I hear. I'm going to promise you, fellas, this ramrod on here does not deter the accuracy from these guns. I won several of the Kentucky challenges with my old uh, Black Widow gun, and it had a ramrod on it. I shot the smallest group ever shot at 100 yards with that gun with a ramrod on it. So if it deterred accuracy, I don't think I would have shot the smallest group, and I wouldn't be putting ramrods on all the guns because my pride and joy is making the most accurate guns that money can buy. 
I've said this before, and I'll say it again, you can spend more money, but you cannot buy better. So look right here at Hankins Custom Rifles when you want your next muzzleloader or center fire rifle. We build them all. Um, that's pretty much it on this gun. It's a pretty good rundown. It's a beautiful rifle, and I'm going to make it mine unless one of you guys decide to take it home.